So, I'm sure we would all agree that this is what we want. We want a good stand coming out of the winter, and ultimately we want a high yield and hopefully a good market price. But unfortunately, this is also very attractive to several key insect pests. It could be cabbage seed pod weevil, maybe ligus bug, aphids, flea beetles, and several others. So how do we know if you have pests in your field? Do you guys just do the calendar approach? Well, I sprayed for them on the 7th last year, or maybe my, my neighbor did, or I remember my granddad saying that I sprayed for, for an insect pest one time. Anybody ever done that, calendar approach? That's not good insect pest management. Hopefully, either you and or your crop advisor are out in the field actually looking for insect pests and the beneficials, because this will help you make proper insect pest management uh, decisions. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about four, those four key pests. We're going to talk about pest description. What is it? We'll look at the life cycle of these insects, talk about the damage, uh, monitoring, and look at some threshold and management options. So the first uh, pest of canola is the cabbage seed pod weevil. These guys are small weevils, three to four millimeters long. They are uh, covered with small little hairs. They're uh, gray in color. And typical of most weevils, they have a curved snout and elbowed antenna. These life cycle, these guys, the adults will emerge in the spring. Once it warms up, they'll take flight. They will find the buds of your canola plants where they will start to feed. And then as the uh, pods start to develop, uh, mated females will lay eggs inside those seed pods and the larvae will hatch uh, feeding uh, on the developing seeds. After uh, a fashion of time, they will then exit the pod, drop down into the soil where they will pupate and then emerge as an adult um, in the fall. So this is the life cycle of the pest. Damage symptoms. When these guys are in your pods feeding on your, the seeds seen here, oftentimes you will also have undamaged seeds as well seen here. So basically what will happen is you will get a distorted appearance of the pod. So here's one that's nice and straight. The pod on the bottom has uh, a weevil inside, and so you get pods that are misshapen and or bent. Classic example of uh, cabbage seed pod weevil. Monitoring for this uh, particular pest can be done using a sweep net. How many people here have ever used a sweep net? Oh, wow, great. I figured I'd only see one or two hands. But uh, can be used using a canvas sweep net, go out at the bud stage of the plant, and then just take a 180 degree sweep, basically right to left, through the field. That's how a sweep net works. Monitoring, so if this is your canola field, it is recommended to monitor the perimeter of the field and also the interior of the field. Select 10 locations throughout the field, take 10 180 degree sweeps, and then count the insects in your sweep net. So basically, if you're reaching levels of 30 to 40 adults per 10 sweeps, then you need to be applying some type of an insecticide. So management options, culturally, you can use a trap crop. Has anybody ever used trap crop with canola? Nobody, so this might be something new. This is actually something we're gonna implement in Douglas County. So basically with a trap crop is we're trying to trap the insects into an area that we can treat. So basically the way this works is you could use a trap border and or strips in your canola field of an earlier uh, flowering variety. So basically something that's gonna emerge early, the insects are attracted to that. Instead of spraying the whole field with insecticide, you can just target where the insects are at. Make sense? If you don't wanna mix varieties, you can use your variety and just plant it seven to 10 days early. So basically that's gonna bloom first, same concept. Insects are going to be attracted to that, spray the perimeter, and or spray strips. So this is one way to culturally manage this particular insect pest. Chemically, uh, there are seed treatments and foliar sprays um, for this insect. Uh, I recommend that you uh, consult the Pacific Northwest Insect Management Handbook. I could spend all day talking about different chemicals and different rates, but I'll let you guys do that uh, in the, on your time. But uh, we haven't talked about flea beetles, so ignore that. But uh, one thing I do want to state is since these guys are out when canola is almost in the flowering stage, you want to minimize your non-target effects. 
So what's out there probably foraging on your flower and canola? Bees. We already heard a statement earlier that bees, um, you know, with colony collapse syndrome are um, being impacted. And so if, you know, you really want to uh, try to minimize any negative impacts to pollinators, and you could spray late in the day when uh, pollination is done. Okay, uh, the next particular uh, insect is uh, cabbage aphid. These guys are small, pear-shaped, soft-bodied insects. Some have wings, some don't. Uh, some are green, as in this picture, but some can be yellow, some can be black, some can be red, some can be brown. So uh, this uh, is what an aphid is. These guys have piercing, sucking mouth parts. So basically, instead of chewing a bite out of your canola plant, these guys are sucking the plant juice out of that plant. Damage symptoms, so here you can see plants are stunted. Uh, they may have curled leaves, and they may be discolored, showing uh, that the plant is stressed. Uh, continuing on with damage symptoms, aphids colonies like to show up on the underside of canola leaves. You can see here uh, probably a couple hundred aphids. And then as the plant starts to produce seed heads and pods, the aphids will move up the plant to feed on the, the new foliage, the succulent foliage, seen in this other picture. So problems here is aphid feeding can abort uh, seed pod, they can distort pods, and can really impact yield. Two other problems associated with aphids is, is black sooty mold, which is a kind of a sticky substance that uh, you might see on your canola. And also uh, aphids have been known to vector several diseases uh, to canola. So monitoring thresholds for cabbage aphid. Uh, canola should be scouted bi-weekly uh, for aphids. Uh, treat for aphids when populations exceed two per plant uh, in the seedling stage, five per leaf at the rosette stage, or when 20% of the head uh, is infested during bloom. So in this picture here, you can see that this guy is way past 20%, and he probably should have treated for aphids um, some time ago. Management options for uh, cabbage aphid, biological control. How many people in the room has ever heard of biological control? Most everybody, excellent. Basically with bio control, we're using the, the pest natural enemies to control the insect pest. Uh, one particular uh, bio control that we have for aphids is the ladybird beetle. Um, we have the immature here, and then the adult coccinellid or ladybug um, on the right. These guys can consume up to 5,000 aphids in their lifetime, and that's a lot of aphids. So this is an excellent uh, predator for aphids. Chemically, um, it's there are several uh, chemicals. Again, I, I tell you to consult your Pacific Northwest Insect Management Handbook. Uh, for 2013, there are some new chemicals um, that will be in that uh, guide. So again, um, look at that. But um, it is recommended not to treat late blooming canola um, as for reasons because aphids uh, populations usually decline after bloom. So this would be a, a waste of time and a waste of money. Uh, Ligus bug, tarnished plant bug, pest description. These guys are approximately three, meter, three millimeters wide, six millimeters long. Um, kind of a different colors, uh, some yellows, some tans, some browns. Uh, they have a distinctive V shape on their back. So this is a telltale sign that, that you're dealing with Ligus bug, if you're looking at adults. What if you're looking at the nymphs? Sometimes people confuse this particular insect this immature insect with aphids. The easiest way to tell them apart is look for these black dots on the abdomen and on the thorax, and that will help you distinguish that you're dealing with ligus bugs and not aphids. Damage symptoms, uh, adult ligus bugs like to feed on the developing buds. They will also feed on the stems. So if you see little puncture marks seen here, little hypodermic needle marks, then that is probably a good indication that you have ligus bugs out in the field. This particular insect can also be sampled using a sweep net. And for monitoring, start scouting fields at the bud stage. Uh, swamp sample with a sweep net. When temperatures are warm, remember insects are cold-blooded. So if you're out there and you're all bundled up trying to sample, your insect activity is going to be next to nothing. So pick nice, calm, warm days. Uh, for this particular insect pest, literature states that uh, Try to sample the crop when it's dry. 
If it's just rain, these guys will move down uh, in the lower part of the canopy, and you'll be up there sweeping, and you won't find anything, and you, you'll think that everything is okay. Uh, take 10, uh, 10 samples side to side sweeps through the butt area. And uh, for management, treat if you find 15 ligus bugs uh, at the bud stage to petal drop, and or if you find 20 ligus bugs uh, after petal drop. So these would be the threshold management um, levels. Biologically, there are several uh, natural enemies of this particular insect. Um, Big-eyed bugs or assassin bugs, uh, other insects that will feed on these guys. Uh, chemically, there are several registered insecticides like uh, imidacloprid or bifenthrin that can be used once populations meet uh, an action or treatment threshold. Flea beetles, uh, also known as striped flea beetles, pest description, these guys are shiny. Um, again, small, so if, if you, you know, make sure you don't leave your, your eyeglasses at home. Uh, two to three millimeters and have enlarged hind legs. These guys are called flea beetles because once they're disturbed, they will spring. They'll just jump like a flea, so that hence the name. But life cycle of these guys, uh, adults over winter, they will emerge um, between May and June. They will start to lay their eggs and feed um, through the summer. Uh, eggs hatch into larvae, larvae then pupate, and will um, develop in the soil. So here we can see uh, uh, an example of uh, moderate to severe leaf feeding damage on top. So basically the canola seedlings look like they've been shot with a shotgun. There's tiny little holes everywhere compared to non-damaged canola uh, on the bottom. Monitoring. If this is your canola field, these guys like to invade on the border. So a border sampling would be recommended uh, for this particular insect pest. Continue scouting for two weeks, especially on, again, sunny and calm days uh, for this pest. Uh, threshold management, canola seedlings can withstand up to 50% leaf loss. And I, th I found that actually surprising. But um, it's recommended to treat canola um, when leaf loss has met 25% defoliation and if beetles are present. So if they can withstand 50%, Dale, how come not 50%? Why is that not the treatment threshold? These guys can build up numbers relatively quickly. And so you wouldn't want to just think, well, I can treat it at 50%, and one day you might be at 75% and have complete crop loss. Management options, culturally, um, varieties that have good seedling uh, growth can sometimes outgrow uh, damage caused by this particular insect. Crop rotation, have a question mark. Uh, crop rotation is not recommended for this pest because these guys can migrate uh, long distances. Biologically, uh, no. Again, these guys, they build up in numbers relatively quickly, and they can um, invade uh, vast distances away. So biological control is not recommended. Um, there are seed treatments and post-emergent foliar sprays that can help with uh, flea beetle. Again, consult the Pacific Northwest Management Handbook. And there are also some additional canola insect pests that uh, might be a problem. Um, one in particular is grasshoppers. Uh, up in Douglas County, we're seeing quite a few grasshoppers. And the treatment threshold for grasshoppers is 10 to 12 grasshoppers per square meter. And um, if you've ever walked out in a field and grasshoppers are just boing, bouncing everywhere, that's, that's quite a few. But um, I wish I could have talked longer and got into more depth, but I will be uh, here today and tomorrow. If you guys have any specific questions about um, insect pests, just uh, look me up.